Simpson's rule is a numerical method used to approximate the area under a curve, which is particularly useful for calculating integrals. It is widely used in ship stability and hydrostatics for determining areas, volumes, and centroids. In today's video, we will use Simpson's rule to calculate the water plane area, an area under the curve of statical stability. This is necessary to verify whether a ship's proposed loaded condition complies with the stability criteria laid down by IMO. We will use a simple method to calculate areas under the curve without resorting to integration techniques. Before we proceed with calculating the area under this GZ curve, at a given angle of heel, let me first explain Simpson's first rule, also known as Simpson's one-third rule, which is often referred to as the odd ordinate rule. Let's consider this example. Determine the ship's water plane area using common intervals of 10 meters. The lengths of the ordinates, measured as half breadths, the distance from the centerline to the ship's hull, are given below. We are going to calculate the ship's shaded area. Since the ship is symmetrically divided along the centerline, we only need to determine half of this area. Once calculated, we will double it to obtain the total water plane area. This is the formula for calculating the area using Simpson's first rule. Where one-third is the coefficient, which is a constant value, this is the reason why it is also known as Simpson's one-third rule. H is the common interval, or the distance between ordinates. 1, 4, and 1 are Simpson's multipliers. A, B, and C are reference points along the ship's length, where measurements of ordinates, such as half breadths or GZ values, are taken. Ordinates are the measured values of a function at specific, equally spaced points along an axis. In this illustration, this is the ship's centerline. The vertical lines perpendicular to the centerline are called ordinates. These ordinates are measured from the centerline to the ship's hull and are labeled using alphabets, with values given in meters. You can also label your ordinates using numbers. The interval between ordinates is uniform, in this case, 10 meters, which means the ship's total length is 80 meters. Looking at the illustration, the ship is composed of nine ordinates, starting from A, which is 1.9 meters, to I, where the length is zero. Using this formula, we can calculate the area between A to C. To find the area function, we will multiply the length of ordinate A, 1.9 meters, by Simpson's multiplier 1. Then, ordinate B, 2.5 meters, will be multiplied by 4, and ordinate C, 4.3 meters, will be multiplied by 1. So this is the procedure to find the area with three ordinates. The value of h in this problem is 10 meters. Since this procedure applies only when there are three ordinates, but in this example, we have nine ordinates, the question arises, do we need to repeat the procedure for each section, such as between c and e, e and g, and g and i? The answer is no. Instead, we use the extension of Simpson's first rule. Let's examine how they come up with the following multipliers. If we calculate the area of this second section, using Simpson's multipliers, 1, 4, 1, we notice that ordinate C is used twice, once in the first section, and again in the second section. By combining the multipliers in ordinate C, it becomes 2, instead of 1. That is why with 5 ordinates, the Simpsons multipliers are 1, 4, 2, 4, 1. So instead of calculating the area of the third section, using the multipliers, 1, 4, 1. By combining the multipliers at ordinate E, instead of 1, it will become 2. With 7 ordinates, the Simpsons multipliers are 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 1. 
For the fourth section, the multipliers at ordinate g will also be combined, making it 2, instead of 1. With 9 ordinates, the Simpsons multipliers are 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 1. You can apply this procedure as long as there are multiple ordinates. Remember, the more ordinates you use, the closer your calculated area will be to the actual area. Always ensure that the final multiplier is 1, as the last ordinate only belongs to a single segment. This is what the formula looks like with 9 ordinates. Fill in all the necessary values, then apply the Simpsons multipliers to each ordinate. Next, calculate the sum of the area function. The area is 307 square meters. Since the ordinates are measured in meters and the common interval is also in meters, the calculated area will be in square meters. The calculation is very tedious in this format. A tabular approach makes the calculation much easier. The first column represents the ordinates, arranged from the first to the last. The second column contains the Simpsons multipliers, also arranged sequentially. The last column represents the product, known as the area function. To calculate, multiply each ordinate by its corresponding Simpsons multiplier to obtain the area function. Repeat this process for all ordinates. Then, find the sum of area functions. To calculate the area, use this simplified formula. The area is 307.0 square meters. We will use this tabular approach for our next exercises. Before proceeding with the calculation of the area under the GZ curve, let's first review the stability criteria established by the IMO. These criteria are mandatory for passenger and cargo ships constructed on or after 1st of January 2010. We will focus on the first three stability criteria, as they specifically relate to the area under the GZ curve. Let's use this GZ curve which I created in my previous video. I used KN values to determine the GZ values, and plotted the GZ curve using an Excel sheet. If you want to see the full details on how to construct the GZ curve, kindly check the link in the description or in the comment section. Let's take out this plotted metacentric height. If we check the angle of heel up to 40 degrees, we can see that the common interval is 10 degrees, plotted along the x-axis. And the GZ values represent the ordinates, plotted along the y-axis. Let's check the intact stability criteria, then calculate the area under the GZ curve for the required angle of heel. In criteria number 1, the area under the GZ curve should not be less than 0.055 meter radians up to 30 degrees angle of heel. In number 2, the area under the GZ curve should not be less than 0.09 meter radians up to 40 degrees angle of heel. Let's determine at which angles of heel we can calculate the area under the GZ curve, using Simpson's first rule. Using Simpson's multipliers 1 4 1, the area under the GZ curve can be calculated up to 20 degrees of heel. Extending the multipliers to 1 4 2 4 1, allows for calculations up to 40 degrees, while 1 4 2 4 2 4 1, covers up to 60 degrees angle of heel. It is evident that in criteria number 1, we cannot calculate the area under the GZ curve. However, in criteria number 2, we can calculate the area using this multiplier of Simpson's first rule. But we will not use this formula. Instead, we will use a tabular approach. When the vessel is upright, the GZ value is 0, this is our first ordinate. At 10 degrees angle of heel, the GZ value is 0.12 meter. At 20 degrees, 0.30 meter. At 30 degrees, 0.54 meter. At 40 degrees angle of heel, 
the GZ value is 0.70 meter. Next, apply the Simpson's multiplier to find the area function. Then, add to determine the sum. Next, use this simplified formula to calculate the area under the GZ curve of up to 40 degrees angle of heel. As you can see, the unit in the criteria is given in meter radians, and the GZ values are in meters. However, our common interval is in degrees, so we need to convert it into radians. Since one radian is equivalent to 57.3 degrees, we divide our common interval by 57.3, giving us the value of H, 0.17452 radians. So filling up the formula with the required values, the area under the GZ curve at 40 degrees angle of heel is 0.229 meter radians. If we compare this with the second stability criterion, we can confirm that the vessel meets the mandatory requirements based on her present condition. Let's examine Simpson's second rule, if we can use it to calculate the area under the GZ curve up to a 30 degree angle of heel. Simpson's second rule has a coefficient of 3 eighths, which is why it is also called the Simpson's 3 eighths rule. The Simpson's multipliers are 1 3 3 1. With 7 ordinates, the multipliers are 1 3 3 2 3 3 1. As you can observe, using Simpson's second rule, we can calculate the area under the GZ curve up to 30 degrees and 60 degrees of heel. We will calculate the area up to 30 degrees of heel, as required by intact stability criterion number 1. The key difference between Simpson's first and second rules lies in their coefficients and multipliers, but the overall approach remains similar. We will still use the tabular approach to determine the area. Since we have four ordinates, we will use these multipliers. Our first ordinate corresponds to the ship in an upright position, where the GZ value is zero. The second ordinate is 0.12 meter. The third ordinate is 0.30 meter. And the fourth ordinate is 0.54 meter. Apply the multipliers to find the area functions. Then, add to determine the sum. Use this simplified formula to find the area. Since the required area is in meter radians, and the common interval is in degrees, we need to convert 10 degrees into radians. We have already done this when we use Simpson's first rule. Next, fill in the necessary values. The area under the GZ curve for up to 30 degrees angle of heel is 0.118 meter radians. If we compare this with number one intact stability criterion, we can confirm that the vessel meets the mandatory requirements. So both stability criteria number one and two have been met. Let's proceed to stability criterion number three. According to this criterion, the area under the GZ curve between 30 and 40 degrees angle of heel should not be less than 0.03 meter radians. This means we only need to calculate the area within this range, which consists of two ordinates. Since Simpson's first and second rules require at least three or four ordinates, they are not applicable for this calculation. Let's examine Simpson's third rule, also known as the 5-8 rule, or 5-8-1 rule. It is used to find the area between two consecutive ordinates, when three consecutive ordinates are known. These are the formulas for applying this rule. Since the area we need to calculate has only two ordinates, we must use an adjacent ordinate to apply the rule. If we use this adjacent ordinate on the left side, the section to be calculated becomes area 2, and this is the formula to be applied. While the section with the adjacent ordinate will be area 1, with this formula. In this case, the first ordinate will named A, the second is B, and the third is ordinate C. But what if the available adjacent ordinate is on the right side? This section will become area 2 
and the area between 30 and 40 degrees angle of heel becomes, area 1. Then move the ordinates name from first to last ordinates. But we cannot use this ordinate, because the GZ value at 50 degrees angle of heel is not calculated. We will use the other side of the adjacent ordinate. This section will be area 1, and the area between 30 and 40 degrees heel will be, area 2. Ordinate A will be moved at 20 degrees angle of heel, so as with B and C in sequential order. Let's now calculate the area under the GZ curve, between 30 and 40 degrees angle of heel, using the formula designated for area 2. The value of H, or common interval, is, 10 degrees, so we will divide it by 57.3 to convert into radians. Next, fill in the necessary values. For ordinate C, fill with GZ value of 0 0.70 meter. Ordinate B is, 0 0.54 meter, and ordinate A is, 0 0.30 meter. Next, determine the value inside the parenthesis. The area under the GZ curve between 30 and 40 degrees angle of heel is 0 0.109 meter radians. If we compare this with the third intact stability criterion, we can confirm that the vessel meets the mandatory requirements. That's all for now, I hope you found this video helpful, see you in my next video, thank you for watching, bye.